All right, uh, I'm here with Herman Muhammad, uh, owner and are you Master Barber? Yes, sir. Master Barber at uh, Supreme Styles Barbershop. Um, how long have you been uh, Master Barber, professional owner? I've been cutting hair since 1995. I've been an owner since 1997. All right, so what kind of people do you uh, that do you normally work with? My customers? Customer base? Yeah. Um, man, we work with people from all walks of life, from your, your neighborhood customer to brothers who are doctors, like Brother I Kill sitting up there, and brother just you? walked in, both of them are doctors, so we work with brothers from all walks of life. So what do you spend the majority of your work day and your work week doing? The majority of my work day and work, work week is going to be spent actually uh, behind the chair barbering. Um, uh, of course being in business for as long as I've been in, I have a pretty uh, large clientele. So brothers are constantly coming in and out. So that's what the majority of my work we've just been doing. Um, so when you say like your clients and uh, it's the counterparts, uh, how do you typically communicate with them? Is it via phone, email, text message, or say if somebody's like making an appointment or something like that? Typically, they'll call up on, on, on the phone or leave a text message. Um, that's normally how it comes. Uh, my business, I do appointments sparingly during the week, but like on the weekends, it's so busy that I don't do appointments. I just take walk-ins. Um, services usually last about 30 minutes, so that works better for me. So how does you uh, how does your communication differ from situation to situation? Situation to um, situation. So um, say like you gotta go to lunch or you know somebody else like, you gotta leave somebody else here in charge of uh, the shop or something like that. Well, typically, I mean, I normally <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> I normally don't take a lunch. Um, but it's easy, you know, most, most of these guys have, have uh, been at the shop for, everybody's been here well over 15 years. And so, and everybody here is a really good barber. So it's, that's usually not problematic at all. It's just, I just let my clients know when I'm gonna be here and, and, and it normally works. Um, I'll let the barbers know if I'm not gonna be here. And, They'll cover down, they'll open the shop, whereas I normally open at 8.30. Um, we just make adjustments as we go along. Alright, so I guess this kind of ties into this question. Um, how much of your day is spent communicate, communicating with others? Um, like, say you have, like, other than like when you get calls, like, if people want to make appointments. Mm -hmm. um, you have somebody here that like, t takes the shop calls or you know, just strictly um, the walk-ins and, and by appointment or whoever. Yeah, normally we don't we don't have a um, yeah. anybody who takes calls specifically. Uh, we have one line in the shop and you know whoever's closest to the phone will grab it. Um, what will happen with regards to new business though a lot of times is uh, people will contact us based upon uh, they saw the site online, and when they come in, you know, it's just a matter of uh, getting them in the chair of, 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 a, of the first available barber. But communication is, is, is going on throughout the day. We're talking amongst each other. Of course, we talk to the clients. We've got to communicate and ask them how you want your haircut. And, and of course, you're going to have 
small talk and conversation while brothers in the chair as well. So, yeah, communication is constant and extremely important. Um, how does your official role at work influence your perception of your work environment? How does my official role at work influence your perception of your work environment? Um, no, 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 that's an interesting question. I, I don't know, because in terms of my official role, you know, everything is... It's like uh, a business that is very, very uh, social and cordial in nature. So, um, I don't know. That's that's an interesting question. All right. Well, how how would you think others perceive you as in, in your official role? <laughs> well, I, again, it's the same scenario. I, I think that. Um, I'm perceived as as just a brother. You know what I'm saying? A brother, the barber's cutting hair. Matter of fact, that's how I refer to myself, Brother Herman. That's who I am. So hopefully that's how I'm perceived. Uh, do, you, do you have to use any type of persuasion in your work environment? Uh, uh, if you want something to somebody, what do you say? How do you say to persuade them to do it? type of persuasion? Well, one thing I can think of in regards to using some type of persuasion is if, like, say somebody got a, a hairline that's back here and a flat top. <laughs> persuade them. Persuade them not to do that. <laughs> professional opinion as to how that will not look good. What was that thinking? That's before he went on program. Where was he at? Alright, so I guess this is gonna go with that question. How does that come here now? And then you communicate the style and influence your ability to listen to the, the problem. Turn it back. Yeah. Can I say it one more time? Alright, so how does this enable you to communicate a style of influence to listen to the problem about, say, the hairline or something like that? Somebody's. I think it's easy, man. I think, I think the, the more comfortable a person is um, with you personally um, and professional, the more easy it will be for you to be able to persuade them to do a certain thing. You know, even, even with regards to, you know, uh, interpersonal relationships within the shop. You know, as long as when you have a, a really good, when you have really good relationships with wherever it is that you're working with, it's not that difficult to persuade them to do this, that, or the other, whatever it is that you need done. So what do you say to what do you say to them who come to you with like a problem? Of course, that's gonna that's gonna depend on what the problem is. Um, if I can help in any way, counsel in any way, I, 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 I do my best to do so. Um, but of course, it just depends on, on what we're talking about. Appreciate you, man. Thanks a lot. Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. All right. So what do you uh, say to someone who has who's made a mistake? Say like, Somebody work work with, or if they're if they're what? What do you say to someone that made a mistake? Was made a mistake. <laughs> um, you know what? When people, I mean, because to 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 make a mistake is um, 
is the most human thing that a person can do. And so when people forget or, 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 or make a mistake, uh, as long as you learn from it, it's all good. You know what I mean? And, and that's the thing that we need to take away. Mistakes aren't necessarily failures. Mistakes are just a way to teach you to do, to, uh, to, mistakes are a way to teach you what not to do. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's the best thing I can offer you with regard to mistakes. You ever deal with like conflict in the workplace? Uh, sure. Sure, and again, it, it, and 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 the, the thing with conflict is, as long as you've always been a fair and just person, it's easy to deal with conflict because you're you're dealing from a, a, a position of fairness and rightness, and so you can whatever uh, decision that needs to be made, whether. It's, you know, no matter how difficult it is, you can always um, make that decision um, and feel good about it because you've always dealt with that person fairly and justly. Can you think of any aspects of nonverbal communication such as body language, eye contact, that impact the way you do the job? Body language that impacts. Um, call time and name. You should hate. Not from a way of communication. I told my job. Don't say that to him. Um, told me, but the only one is. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times you have clients who might be shy about what it is that they want, and you can say that by their body language. And again, it's your job as a barber or a stylist just to make them feel comfortable and at ease in your chair, make them to know that you're professional enough to handle what it is that they want to where they can ease up and, and be more comfortable. Um, is there anything you wish you would have learned about on the job communication school but didn't that you have okay, that you have to learn? The other little kids that were in school, that yeah, not, no, not really. Man, I, I think the best, the best teacher is experience. You know, what I'm saying in, in school you learn whatever it is that they're trying to get over in theory. But until you actually get out in the field, until you actually are on that particular job, no matter what it is, um, you're really not going to know the real of it until you actually experience it. And so, you know, experience, in my view, is definitely the best teacher I can ever get So what was the most so difficult thing about on-the-job communication for you? Um, the most difficult thing? I think the, the most difficult thing is just different dealing with um, different types of people. You know what I mean? You're going to encounter all sorts of uh, people uh, in life. And it's being able to properly handle people that's going to determine the amount of success that you have in any particular field. So what's the most important thing about um, job communication that you learn? The most important thing? I think that I think the important and the difficult go hand in hand <laughs> because that is definitely, it, it, it goes right side by side. Man. I mean, just, just knowing how to properly handle people and different types of people. And, uh, not to respond emotionally, especially in the business atmosphere, because after all, it's, oh, yeah. it's not uh, personal, it is absolutely business. You know. I, I, I can agree with that. Yes. So, so what kind of advice would you give, uh, give someone like me starting, starting off? Starting off? And I would say just um, just keep doing what you're doing, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, be, uh, whatever it is that you choose to do, always try and be a professional. You know 
know what I'm saying? Always, um, always be as cordial as you can. Be consistent in whatever it is that you do. Be on time. There's certain things that uh, have nothing to do with gifts or talents that you can do that are always going to be helpful. And that is be on time, be professional, be consistent. Um, those are the most important things. That's, yeah, that's what's um, going to set you apart in any particular field. Is right. the level of professionalism that you exude in your chosen profession. So is there anything, just about wraps it up, but is there anything um, that I didn't ask that you would like to add to? Thank you, Mr. Brother. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Yeah.